So we've got some amazing tags that we were able to draw in the state of Idaho, Southern Idaho. And we're gonna put in a camp that's gonna be there for about probably 45 days. And we got some access to some private land with the camp will be on. We won't do all of our hunting on private land, but it allows our camp to be safe and secure. Finally made it to camp. These are our trailers from Redline that are friends of Bushes and now friends of ours. And they hooked us up with some camp trailers for, for the hunt up here, so it's really nice of them. Reds on there yet that are 30 inch, 6 by 6 or bigger with junk. <laughs> no reds yet. <laughs> there is a one yellow. One yellow? So this is Kylie taking care of me. Yep. She's got me a map. And she's got pins. So we got does and forkies, 3 by 3s and lower. 4 by 4s. We've got some 4 by 4s, so that's good. One 5 by 5. No 200 no yet. productive day. We saw some deer, but nothing that we'd want to shoot. Not actually even a really mature buck. We just saw three groups of does with a couple little bucks in there. Anyway, so that's what we had today. All right. Camp life was great, so hunt hard all day, get a little frustrated, see a lot of deer, but no really good bucks, and we just Kind of want to go back and relax and Dennis and Guy, a uh, couple of old timers from Idaho have been hunting here their whole lives. They just like hanging out in our camp so you know, they'd make coffee and cook dinner and it was great. The fire was always going, uh, the coffee was always hot, the food was always good and camp life made it all better at night. So today we're going to go up, last night my few of our former campers saw two bucks over the hill behind our camp, so <laughs> if we don't we see them, we're going to drive back over where we were yesterday and then we're going to try to look for the big buck. So last night, my sister and a few other people went hiking and they saw a really nice four point, uh, I think it was a four by three. And so it was just behind our camp. So my dad took me behind the um, camp, behind the hill, and we were looking for the four by three so I could shoot it. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't see it. The rut is weird right now. Every time we find does, there's no bucks. And uh, two weeks ago, every time you found a group of does, there was bucks with them. So I think the bucks are off a little bit. Every All the buck, good bucks, decent bucks we've seen haven't been with does. So we're looking for needles and haystacks, lots and lots of does though. Triple Beard, the first all-lead turkey load from the makers of Heavy Shot. Speedball technology reduces defamation on setback, keeping the pellets more uniform and reduces the pancake effect of lead. Magnum Blend technology, which is a mix of five, sixes, and sevens, lets you take gobblers at any range, whether it's up close and personal or you gotta reach out and touch one. 
It's available in three and three and a half inch 12 gauge, as well as three inch 20 gauge. Check out the new Triple Beard at HeavyShot.com. I think we probably went maybe five, six miles. It doesn't sound like much, but it is when you're 11 years old, right? And on the way back to camp, just before we get into camp, I look up and I see a coyote. And I thought this is a perfect opportunity to boost her morale, to get her back in, into you know, the click of things and also do some great practice. Not to mention also, the ranch we were staying on, the one thing that the rancher asked me, the owner, was if you see a coyote, please shoot it. Nailed him. Center piled him. There's <laughs> Coyote. Sweet. You dialed him in. 250. 250. You nailed him. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Nailed him. Yeah, you nailed him. Let's go check him out. Okay. Um, I actually saw a Coyote and I shot that for good practice and the ranchers are really thankful for that because um, all the ranchers around don't like the coyotes because they eat their calves and it's kind of sad. We were walking up here and my dad saw a coyote so we just got all set up and shot him, I guess. 255 yards is sweet. Yep. Sweet shot. Way to take your time getting set up. It doesn't feel comfortable if you just like that when we get a big buck. So it's good practice. Besides these coyotes, they're thick in here and Harass the cows down on the ranch. He'll be happy we got one too, right? Good job. That was a great shot. That's good practice for the deer, huh? That's gonna look beautiful on your wall. You did a perfect shot. Is that okay? Well, he's uphill too. Yeah. Well, the ability to take my daughters hunting and to enjoy the sport is probably more precious to me than anything else that I could, I've done personally or could do personally. If I could trade myself out and never pull the trigger again and just ensure that, you know, that I was with them and that I was there, a part of it, I'd do it in a second. Okay, so we're gonna, well, this is what I wanna do. I wanna go up, I wanna check things out like what we did yesterday. And then if there's some good, deer up there. I want to come back here and then I want to walk all the way up and make like a do another J thing. J hook. J hook. And then we're gonna check out the deer. We're going up to this place which is like the border of Oregon and Idaho. It's like packed, loaded, loaded, loaded with mule deer. And we ran into one of my dad's friends and he took us up there. And it started off with like four does and we just glassed up there for a while and then just like a switch turned on and all the deer stood up. I just wanted to get up on this feet across that. I love it to the point to where I get excitement. I feel like I'm 12, 13, 14 years old again, doing it all over, you know, it's just amazing. You know, that whole buck fever thing that people talk about, that's been gone for me for a lot of time and it's been eroded not only through hunting, but through my combat experience and stuff. And to have that come back into my life through my children and see their excitement, it's priceless.
you see what happened? He's still standing there. He's like, I can't see him. shot four times because he was already hurt when I, I went up to him. I don't know what was wrong with him, but I can tell you one thing. I have no idea how big he is. I just know he's good and wide. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Nice job. Thanks, oh, buddy. Job. Good shooting. Thank you so much. That was one of the toughest hunts I have ever done. I can't see that. I can't see that. No, it was crazy because he kept moving. And I, and my, the... my glasses are fogged, Dad. <laughs> As we started to make the approach, I knew it was gonna be impossible with all the eyes that were out there. So we pulled back and came and all the way around, circumnavigated all the, the massive deer, and basically put ourselves in a position of tactical advantage where we could get eyes on. It was crazy, so sagebrush was in the way, a doe, a few does blocked the heart of the deer when it was broadside so I couldn't shoot it then. You might have a narrow little window about this big, which translates downrange to about 10 yards. And I was just like, okay, I'm gonna do a Texas hard shot. And so I did. This was the most difficult hunt that I've ever been on. And I've hunted all over the world. Well, I know that when, you, when he's going through the brush like that and that's all you've got, you already hit him once. That's the most humane thing for you to do. Give me a hug. <laughs> wow. Be the first human to ever touch those horns. I'm most thankful for my dad because he taught me all that stuff, like I said earlier. And um, he is the one who put us in for the tag. And you should have seen him when he when we drew the tag. He acted, I thought the house was on fire. He was going so crazy. So that was exciting. Yeah. That was, uh, that was a very, very exciting hunt because it was so difficult because the brush. And yep. I guess lesson learned for us is to go practice setting up in tall sagebrush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because we set up, I think, eight times. Mm -hmm. And you got on the sticks the first time, and it was just it too was shaky. Too, yeah. And so you said you had yeah. to get on the ground, so we had yeah. to continue in, right? Mm -hmm. And then there was other bucks that were in, like, intermingled. Even Sean was having mm -hmm. trouble finding. I know. And He's like, wait, which one? <laughs> which one is it? Which one is it? You know, thanks to the uh, Idaho Fishing Game for managing this unit. It's got spectacular bucks. And... Um, it just, uh, you know, it's amazing for an 11-year-old girl to be able to come out and harvest a deer like this, a mule deer, for the first time. So it's fantastic. Glad we were able to help out with this hunt for Cryptek Outdoor Group. Uh, they had a couple of young children in their camp, and we were able to help go out there and help make it more comfortable for them and enjoy the experience. A little bit about Redline is we're a recreational club. So instead of going out and buying a, a, a toy hauler, an ATV, or a UTV, or snowmobiles, or boats, or whatever, when it comes to the recreational wor world, you get a membership with us and you get access to all that stuff. So the idea is we increase the variety of the toys that you get to play with. Uh, we take care of all the hassles of maintenance and storage, winterizing, dewinterizing, all that fun stuff. And all you have to focus on is going out and having a good time. hike over to him about three to four mile hike back over to where he was we're hoping that he's still in the vicinity he wasn't we couldn't see him anymore um, we, we were taking a chance but I knew that it was my last day and I wanted to fill my tank well we're on the ridge where we saw this big gargantuan two point take us a couple hours to get over here they're not bedded down that we saw him anymore so now we're just playing cat and mouse
I was shooting off shooting sticks, so uh, it was a touch wobbly. I was really trying to get my breath under control. I was really trying to get him in my sights. I wanted to make a clean shot. That's the most important thing to me. I'm a lady. I don't like to see anybody suffer, any animal suffer. So I, I will not take the shot if I don't feel like I have a good one. Um, I did go ahead and find that I, I could get a good shot on him. Definitely a family hunt. My girls have already gotten their deer and um, and I saved mine for last. We love um, to eat our kill and, and we cook with game and venison and and whatever we shoot. So it uh, it will definitely feed the family and um, you know, it's about the experience with the family. The whole th three weekends that we've been hunting, this is our last weekend. So yeah, super, super amazing time, great memories and it will definitely go down in the record books. So last day of the hunt here in southern Idaho, got up uh, a little bit early, earlier than we have been, and we have came over to a different area, got some advice from a friend of ours that runs dogs and chases cougars in the winter, and um, pointed us in the right direction, and we've been in the spot about 10 minutes and already seen about 60 deer. We saw tons and tons and tons of deer. Uh, just not a lot of big bucks. Uh, I think the rut was coming to an end and you know usually they'll go into a second cycle but I don't think that they had hit that yet. Maybe they're headed there towards the end of November, first part of December, but you know this tag ends on the 24th so uh, we we're having uh, trouble finding a, a good mature buck that we would even think about you know harvesting so. That's a really good buck for where we're at in the hunt. Yeah, yeah. I like it. That. He's got, he's a great mainframe 4x4. Yeah, they cur curl around in the front. Mm -hmm. I think we could close the distance pretty quick within 400 meters of him. Yeah. We found one. We found one. <laughs> Step one complete. Step one complete. Step two and three to be determined. <laughs> We're down to the wire. It's the last day of, of the season. Uh, pretty much everybody has left. We got about five hours left of the hunt and just about that time, does standing up everywhere. I don't know if it was the wind or if it was time to get up and feed or whatever it was. Just about that time, we see a big buck stand up. It definitely got tough on us, and we just got off cycle. But we, we pulled it off. I mean, Kylie killed a great deer. Yes, she did. You killed a great deer. McKenna killed a great deer a couple weekends ago. Nikki killed a trophy trophy 
trophy mature two point that she wanted to do. She had to bug out early. But overall, I mean, this has been phenomenal. It's been absolutely amazing. And We've, to cl uh, close it out on a last day with an old, massive, heavy horn, heavy horn, you know, eight-year-old deer. And uh, I'd like to thank, you know, one of my best buds that I got, Mr. Butch Whiting. So thanks for being here and helping me out and sticking it out till the last day, brother. Yeah, brother. We got her done. We got her done. This is so. What a great buck. Awesome. Weapons or not. Beagle 6, Saber 3. Roger, we're observing area, negative contact. Saber 3, Eagle 6. Where can we find out where they are? Are you coming there to the north and south? Alright, these guys definitely got weapons. The wreckage of this life can build you or tear you down. What motivates you when there's no one else around?